Welcome back to the RAS ACS and Behind the Knife Journal Cast on Landmark Papers in General Surgery. My name is Cheyenne Kalafi and I'm a General Surgery resident at the University of Miami. I will be briefly reviewing the Landmark Diverti trial published in the Journal of the American College of Surgeons in 2017. This study compared outcomes in patients with purulent or feculent peritonitis secondary to perforated diverticulitis who underwent either a Hartman's procedure or a primary anastomosis with diverting ostomy. Our treatment of perforated diverticulitis has changed dramatically over time. The first resections were performed utilizing a three-staged approach. First, a diverting proximal ostomy was created, followed by resection of the diseased colon with primary anastomosis, and finally an ostomy reversal. This approach eventually fell out of favor due to evidence of increasing morbidity and mortality associated with leaving the diseased segment of colon in place until the second operation. The two-staged Hartman's procedure was later adopted as the preferred operation for perforated diverticulitis. This approach allows resection of the diseased colon at the index operation with creation of an end ostomy, followed by stoma takedown and restoration of GI continuity at a later date. We now understand that each operation carries with it a significant risk to morbidity and mortality, especially the Hartman's reversal. In an effort to avoid the risks associated with the second operation, Investigators have begun to revisit the role of primary anastomosis with a diverting ostomy in treating perforated diverticulitis. The Diverti trial was a prospective, multi-centered, randomized controlled trial that took place from 2008 to 2012 across seven surgical centers in France. Inclusion criteria were patients who are at least 18 years old with Hinchy stage 3 or 4 disease. Patients were excluded if they presented with septic shock or organ failure. Participants were randomized to treatment groups immediately prior to their operation. Participants received either a Hartman's procedure or a primary anastomosis with or without diverting ostomy. The anastomotic technique was left to the discretion of the attending surgeon, as was the decision to perform a diverting loop ileostomy or colostomy. A leak test was performed for all anastomoses and a barium enema was administered as part of the preoperative workup prior to ostomy reversal. The primary endpoint was in mortality after the index operation and after ostomy reversal. Secondary endpoints included morbidity, OR time, length of stay in the ICU, hospital length of stay, and stoma reversal rates. Data from the study was analyzed using, utilizing the intention to treat principle. A total of 102 patients were included in the study. 52 patients were assigned to the Hartman's arm and 50 patients to the primary anastomosis group. 15 patients in the primary anastomosis arm did not have a diverting ostomy performed. Five patients initially randomized to primary anastomosis required a Hartman's, two because they became hemodynamically unstable intraoperatively, and three because of technical difficulties in performing the anastomosis. Primary endpoint analysis demonstrated no significant difference in mortality between the Hartman's group and the primary anastomosis group. After 18 months of follow-up, the rate of stoma reversal was significantly higher in the primary anastomosis group, with 96% having undergone reversal, compared with just 65% in the Hartman's group. All other secondary endpoints were not statistically different between the two treatments. The Diverti trial suggests that in patients with stage 3 or 4 diverticulitis without evidence of septic shock or organ failure, Primary anastomosis with or without diverting ostomy appears to have similar morbidity and mortality compared with the Hartman's procedure. Unfortunately, this study was stopped prior to reaching the planned sample size due to slow patient accrual and a determination by investigators that they would not be able to detect a difference in mortality should they continue with accrual. While this study was underpowered, secondary endpoint analysis demonstrated significantly improved rates of stoma reversal in the primary anastomosis group. While there are various clinical circumstances when a Hartman's is warranted, the main takeaway from this study is that primary anastomosis with or without diverting ostomy should be the preferred operative approach when feasible. Again, my name is Cheyenne Kalafi and I'm a general surgery resident at the University of Miami. If you have questions or comments, you can reach me by email or on Twitter at MD. I want to thank Dr. Rishi Rattan for his assistance in preparing this talk. Stay tuned for more presentations on other landmark trials in surgery and thank you for listening.